In this video, we are going to cover how to create a floor planner project by using an existing document. Now, for this video, we're going to use the image that you see on your screen here, which is actually from architecturaldesigns.com, and I'll post a link in the description below to check out their website. They're a great resource. But let's say that we want to try to recreate this floor plan. We can do it one of two ways. So we could either just use this, uh, you know, print it out or put it on another screen, use it as a frame of reference, or we can use this exact image and pull it into floor planner uh, to give us a hand in our layout. So let's do that. So first I'm going to take this uh, image. I'm just going to bring it to my other screen and I'm going to start a new project by clicking on create project. And if you're a student in my class, uh, you will know how to uh, label uh, this document based on the, the project uh, description. But for here, I'm just going to put so first dot last dash AS0901. I'll leave everything else blank and hit create project. So now again, I have my option of how I want to choose my floor planner project. I can use the room wizard, upload image, or start with an empty plan. For this project, I want to upload an image. Click on upload image. And on the top left here, it asked me for my backdrop and I need to choose a file. So I'm gonna click on choose file. And I've already saved uh, the image that, that we saw moments ago. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And again, this could be a, a J, uh, JPG. It could be you know, a snippet from an AutoCAD file, wherever it may come from, you could pull it on in. It'll take a moment to upload. All right, and there we have it. So we could take, we could position it, we can move it how, wherever we want, but we'll just, we'll just leave it in space here, that's okay. And now here's the thing, we have this image in here and we can see that we actually have the dimensions labeled on the image as a frame of reference, but I don't have any confidence that this is imported to any scale. So for example, I don't know if this 36 foot dimension is actually correct. So the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna check to make sure that my dimensions are correct. So what I'm gonna do is on the bottom left-hand side of my screen, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my unit of measures from meter to feet. And then I'm gonna click on the tape measure icon here, or button here. And then I'm gonna place my cursor at the left extension line. I'm gonna left click and hold and drag vertical, or excuse me, horizontally to the right. And I can tell that I'm horizontal because I have that blue inferencing line. See if I, if I go uh, north or south of vertical, that line goes away. So then I'm gonna get right to the, my right hand side extension line. And you'll see that my, my measurement is actually 19 feet three and a quarter inches. So it's not 36 feet long. So this is a currently a bad reference. So what I need to do is I need to scale this image up. Now to do that, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check, click off of my uh, tape measure tool. I'm going to click on background settings. And if you don't get defaulted right to there, that's under our build menu, which is the hammer. And go down to background settings. And up on the top left, we have this icon, which is with two arrows and a single click, it's within parentheses. And it says, draw a line next to something you know of real life size of. Okay, so with this, we're going to use our 36 foot dimension as a frame of reference. So I'm gonna click on this icon. And now I'm going to single click, or single left click on the left hand side. And then click on the right hand side. I'm gonna to try to keep it as vertical, or excuse me, keep on saying vertical, as horizontal as possible. And once I click on my right extension line, now it's gonna ask me for a length. So here I'm gonna type in 36 feet, and hit the check mark or I can hit enter. And you'll see that my image scales up. Now it's safe to assume that that scaled correctly, but I'm gonna zoom out by scrolling down on my middle mouse wheel. And now I am just gonna check my dimension again by going back down to my tape measure tool. And I'm going to left click and hold on my left extension line, bring it horizontally to my right extension line. And I am right about at 36 feet, right? I got 36 and three quarters. I'm not too worried about that three quarters. As long as I'm within a couple inches, I'm okay. It's okay to be off by inches in this program, but not feet, certainly not. So now that we have our image um, inside of our floor planner and we are confident with the, the dimensions, we, let's, let's check the dimension of one more uh, the vertical dimension. So let's just click on tape measure and let's, whoops, let's actually click on it. And I'm going to click on the top extension line, go down to the bottom extension line, and I'm right about at 40, 
41, 42 ish feet. Again, I'm off by a few inches. I'm okay with that. Okay, so now that we have our background in place and we're confident with our background, we can go ahead and start um, uh, overlaying our project on top of this. Now to do that, I'm gonna go back to my build menu and I like to start in one corner by drawing a room. So I'm gonna go to draw room. And now the first thing I need to do is verify the thickness of my walls. So I'm not quite sure how thick these walls are, but from some other of my videos, you will know that if I zoom in, the thickness of my circle or the diameter of my circle is equal to the thickness of my wall. So here, I, I feel like this is a little bit bigger than I need it to be. So I'm just gonna make this five inches. Enter. And my circle got a little bit smaller, so that's where I want. So if you're not familiar with my other videos, um, if you take the, thick, the thickness, whether you type in the actual value or use the slider bar, let's just do an extreme example, bring it all up to like two feet, you'll see that the circle gets very, very large. Or if I bring it down to two inches, it gets very small. So the slider and the, and the, uh, the value that I place in this text box are representative of my, my realistic wall thickness. So I'm gonna keep it right about five inches. And now I can start creating my room. So I'm gonna start with this corner here, the top left, left click once, and I'm gonna bring it to, I think my second bedroom right here. All right, and now I'm just gonna keep on going and start drawing my rooms. Okay, I'm not too worried about all the little rooms. I know I missed a bunch of walls over here, but we'll come to those later. Whoops, not mean to do that. So let me go back to draw room. And now I wanna draw bedroom two. Okay, so before I start uh, adding additional rooms in there, I'm gonna make sure that my cursor is in line with my existing walls. And I know that because when I go right, when it snaps to my corner, I have my, uh, my dashed blue inferencing lines there. That's gonna let the program know that I wanna connect to those existing walls. So I'm just gonna go ahead and zip around. Have bedroom two there. And let's put in bedroom one. Again, snapping to my inferencing lines. I'm gonna come up to here. So I see my inference lines again. Okay, so now I have, I, I know I have my full area covered because everything kind of turned this, this peach color, right? But there are a bunch of lines in here, a bunch of walls in here that I missed. So I'm gonna go ahead and add those in. And to do that, I'm just gonna go into draw wall. And I'm gonna start in the top right corner. No rhyme or reason, just looks good. Every time I connect a wall, again, I'm always looking for those inferencing lines. And I'm just gonna go right around and start tracing over the top. Okay, now I think I've covered all of my walls, but I'm not, honestly, I'm not 100% sure. So there is a way that I can uh, change the visibility of my background to see if I got all my walls covered or if I have overlapping walls or if I need to delete some. So to do that, on the left-hand side, again, under my build menu, I'm gonna go back to background settings. And I could take the transparency of my background and I could change it. So I'm just gonna dim it a little bit you can kind of see that my, my overlay disappears. When I go the other way, I can kind of get an idea of what's missing, what's not missing. And I could even, there's some toggles up here where I can change it from hidden to visible. I could turn it right on or off. And I could bring it to the front or the back, whichever, whichever it may be. So I'm gonna dim it just a little bit here because I see that I have some walls that I need to delete. So for example, right here inside of the bathroom, I drew a wall that goes right through, right? There's, this is a problem. 
because you know you don't want to <laughs> you don't want to completely block off your toilet. But the great thing about this is if I just click on that section of the wall, I can delete it. Even though I drew it in as one whole wall, floor planner is smart enough to know that any place I have an intersection of two walls, I may want to delete a section of that wall. So let me see if that happens anywhere else. I don't believe it does. No, we're looking good. Okay, so now that I have my walls in place, let's go ahead and add the doors in. So to add doors, again, I'm in my build menu and I'm gonna go to place doors. And your view may not look like this by default and that's probably because you may be, I think it defaults to 2D view and to switch between 2D and 3D view. Down here, there's a little toggle switch that goes from 2D view to 3D view. Personally, I like the 3D view just so that way I can see you know, if, if doors, Doors have windows in them or they're solid doors because it's kind of hard to see that in the 2D view. They all pretty much look the same. It's just the standard symbology um, for doors. So I'm going to click back over to 3D view. And let's start with a front door. Let's start with a door right here off of the porch. So I think I'm going to use, oh, let's just use this glass door. All right, so I just clicked it and I'm going to drag and drop it about to where I want it. Right there. And then if I click on the door, you'll see that the door swing is not the same as my background image. So I could change my door swing. And there we have it. So let's add in a couple more doors. Let's pop in our, our rear doors back here. And let's see, what's this guy? We have French doors. Let's put in the double hung doors. No, we don't want those. We don't want to swing both ways. We want to, let's just take our French doors those there and I want to use those doors again over on this side in bedroom one so if I click on those and hit the duplicate icon I get the same doors and I can just drag it on over I'm not too worried about the size just yet I'll take care of the sizes later and let's pop in a couple interior doors just to say we did and let's use some standard solid doors for that purpose We'll pop one here. Again, I'll change the, the swing direction. And let's put in, let's see, some double pocket doors. Don't want those. Bifold doors. Let's put them over here with our washer and dryer. Change my swing. Good to go. Okay, of course, there's a lot more doors on here, and let's just pop a couple more windows on. Let's just give you give you all an example. Uh, I just want a standard double long window. And again, if I just mouse over and don't click anything, it gives me an, uh, a definition of, of what my elements are. So there's a double hung window. Place one here. And I'm going to duplicate it because I want to use the same window all over. And I could drag and drop it from my menu again. Whatever is easier for you. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So let's say that you go through, you put it, you put in all your doors, you put in all your windows, and you're all set with your with, with this background because it's going to come a point where you, you know, just you shouldn't be copying this anymore, and you have to start doing your own interior design elements. So to do that, I'm going to go back to my build menu, into my background settings, and I'm going to turn that off. And now you see that I have my layout complete here. All right. Now, again, if I wanted to go and use my um, my room wizard to, to set up my rooms, let's say that I want to take uh, this bedroom, I think it was bedroom two, and assign it as a bedroom. I'm going to click inside of that bedroom area. I'm going to change the room type to a bedroom. And click off here, my X in the top right, and my magic layout appears. So I've got a magic layout. Here I could change the type of style that I want. I'm just going to go to country because we're all familiar with the country layout. And click on magic layout. And it places my, my furniture in. And again, if I don't like the placement of that, I can hit magic layout again and keep on going through. Now, one thing I will uh, recommend and cost you to do is make sure that you put all of your doors and your windows in before you go putting in uh, the magic layout layouts and assigning your rooms just because here um, there's no, currently no door into my bedroom so you know the only way to get into this bedroom is through the hallway and in this wall somewhere but 
we have furniture in the way. Now, if I were to put a, uh, a door there, it would look differently. Actually, let's do that. So I'm going to keep on hitting control Z and that's going to undo my, uh, my last, uh, commands. And let me just put a door in, I'll show you what I mean. So I'm just going to take a door and let's just say I want my door here. Okay. Now I'm going to click back in my bedroom and I'm going to go back to magic layout and let's see what happens. You'll see that it rearranged the furniture to stay away from the door because it knows you can't put a piece of furniture in front of a door. It renders it useless. So having all of your doors and all your windows in beforehand, uh, before doing the magic layout and assigning your rooms is a, is a bit of a time saver and it maximizes the, uh, the most out of the magic layout feature. All right. So I'm going to stop there. Um, there will be other videos to show you how to do uh, further interior design and, and move objects around. But the intent of this was to bring a image in which was uh, this image here. And we pulled that into floor planner. We scaled it or we checked the size of it first. Then we scaled it. We checked the size of it again. And then we use that as a template to create our floor planner design.